Hi everybody, welcome back to Happy Little Diodes, where today we're going to be continuing our work on the ETI Triton by testing all of its memory chips. So far we've learned about the history of the machine, and we've got this Triton's power circuit up and running. In doing so, all of the chips had to be removed, which leaves us in a good position to start testing the memory chips. To do this we're going to design a RAM tester using an Arduino. This will be hooked up to a prototype breadboard, which will contain a zero insertion force connector like this one, so we can handle the chips delicately while removing them and fitting them to the tester. As you can see here, there are 24 RAM chips to test, so that means there will be a lot of plugging in and taking out RAM chips during the testing. Now we're not going to rush this, so pause the video now and make yourself a cup of tea. Before we get into writing any scripts, or hooking up the breadboard even, we're going to look at the datasheet for these RAM chips. This contains all the information we need to effectively test them. Let's take it from the top. There are 256 addressable 4-bit words in each RAM chip. That means address locations range from 0 to 255, and if you've done your binary homework, that means we're going to need 8 bits to address these chips. And we can expect 8 of the chip's pins to correspond to these 8 bits. We know that the RAM chips store 4-bit words, so that means there's going to be 4 data pins on each chip. We know that because the datasheet tells us there's a common data input and output. So depending on which mode we tell the chip to be in, read or write, these four pins will act as inputs or outputs. The chip only needs a plus 5 volt supply voltage, that should be easy because the Arduino provides that. Also, these are static RAM chips, that means there's no clocks required, no refreshing required, they should be really easy to work with. Maximum access time is 1 microsecond, that's fine because we'll be using delays of 1 millisecond in our script. And we're also told that there's a chip enable input, which I'm just going to set to enable the whole time. Alright, let's take a look at the actual pins on the chips, which are mounted upside down. Hang on a second. Alright, it is an 18 pin package, and all our pins are described here, so let's take it from the top. As we mentioned earlier, it only needs 5 volts, so we'll provide that through VCC and ground. Here are our predicted 8 address lines. There are actually two chip enable lines which we'll just hold low so the chip is always enabled. Remember that a bar over the pin designation means that it is active low. There's also an output disable pin which we're going to have to use correctly to read the data from the chip. There's also the read write pin which we'll use to put the chip in a read or write mode. And finally these four pins which will carry our data into or out of the chip. Okay, can we build it yet? No, not yet. Let's have a look at the voltages in the datasheet. We need to know that our logic highs and logic lows are going to be correct for this chip. So our input low voltage should be between minus 0.5 and plus 0.65 volts. The input high should be between 2.2 and plus 5 volts. Our low output voltage will be less than 0.45 volts. And our output high voltage will be above 2.2 volts. And I know that the digital pins on the Arduino will be happy with this, so we're okay to continue. Okay, can we build it yet? Uh, not quite. Let's have a look at the pins on the chip, and choose which of our logic pins on the Arduino will correspond to each. If we do this now, and we do it carefully, it will save us getting into a mess while we're writing our script. I've decided to use pins 46 through 53 for the 8 address pins. 31 through 34 will be the data bus. Pin 40 will carry our read or write mode. 44 will be the output disable. Our 5 volt supply and our ground are fixed on these pins on this particular board. And that's going to look like this in our script. Notice that the single pins are defined as integers and the groups of pins are defined as arrays of integers. Using arrays is going to allow us to loop through the pins easily. And the first method in our Arduino sketch is going to be the setup function. First we'll initialize the serial monitor. This allows the tester to feed back debugging information and results to the PC that we'll see in a text format. Secondly, we'll loop through our four data pins and define them as output pins because the first operation we'll do is to write data to the chip. Similarly, our eight address pins should also be output pins. And that just leaves the read write pin and the output disable pin, which are also outputs. At this point, I would normally suggest blocking out some pseudocode to define how the scripts are going to write and read to and from the chip. But the datasheet's done this for us already in the form of these waveform diagrams. So let's make a start and figure out what our write cycle script is going to look like. 
we'll first set our address pins to the address we want to test, while setting our output disable to high. We don't need to worry about chip enable because we've tied those low. Next we set the four data pins to the value we want to write to the chip, and we set read write to low which corresponds to write mode. At this point we have to be careful to allow the data to stabilise, so we'll manually add a delay to our script. Once we're happy, we can set read write back to high. We'll add a delay just to let everything settle down before moving on to the read cycle. Alright, let's look at our actual script. The write data method will take two arguments, an address counter and a data counter. These will come from the loop script which will be cycling through all 256 possible addresses, writing all 16 possible combinations of data bits. We'll be using the byte data format, which is very handy as you'll see, for reading each of the individual bits of that byte. Initially we have to tell the four data pins that they're going to be outputs. I know we already did that in the initialization, but this write method will be happening after a read method, during which the data pins will be used as inputs. First of all we disable the output by setting the output disable pin to high, and we use this loop to set our eight address pins. Any line starting serial.print is just for debugging or feedback purposes, so keep them in your script but we won't go over them in detail here. The next loop is exactly the same except it goes through the four data bits and sets them to the corresponding values for the data value that we want to write. In the same breath we set the chip's read write mode to write. Crucially we include a delay at this point, I've used 2 milliseconds which is way more than the chip needs. And finally we set the read write pin back to read mode. That defines our write method. How about the read method? Looking at the timing diagram from the datasheet, hidden in the heading tells us that read write should be set to 1, so that's the first thing we'll do. In fact, you might have spotted that that was the last thing we did in the write script. With that taken care of, the first thing to do is set up our address bits like we did previously. The chip is always enabled, so the next thing to do is set the output disable to low, because we want the chip to output its contents. We then wait for the data out to settle and become valid, before disabling the output again. So let's have a look. The read data method takes, again, two arguments, the address counter and the data counter, just like the write method. We need to tell the Arduino that the four data pins are now going to act as inputs. I threw in a delay for good measure before setting the read write pin to read mode. We set the address bits like we did before with a loop, and then we enable the output by switching the output disable value to low. After a 2 millisecond delay, we can then read in the value on the data bus. Ignoring the serial print lines, you can see that this loop is quite simple. It just checks that the value on the data bus matches the value that it expects. If it does, the script doesn't do anything. If it doesn't, it will output information about the failure to the serial monitor. Finally, we disable the output. Alright, we're almost there. Let's just take a look at the loop script. Aside from the serial print commands, there's not much to it. The loop will go through all addresses from 0 to 255, and for each address, we'll go through all the possible data values between 0 and 15. We then call the write data method, passing through the address and data counters, delay for one millisecond for good measure, before calling the read data method. Finally, if we've reached address 255, which is the end of the RAM chip, we print a message saying the testing is finished. And here it is. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go through all 24 chips, placing them into the zero insertion force connector, locking them in, plugging in the Arduino, and watching the serial monitor for errors. But before spending all that time testing all these chips, let's get the scope out and check that the tester is doing what we designed it to do. I'll start by probing a few of the address lines. A0 should be cycling from high to low the most rapidly and we should expect A1 to be cycling at half of the rate. And that looks good to me. A2 again should be cycling at half the rate of A1. I won't check them all, I'll just check A3 for good measure and see that it's going at half the rate of A2. Notice also the voltage scale. The high values are at about 5 volts and the low values are at 0 volts, which is perfect. Next we'll check the read-write pin. If we add up all of the delays in the script in each of the methods and the delays in the loop, we should see that the read-write pin is low for 2 milliseconds and high for 10 milliseconds. Let's zoom in and take a look. 
the scale on this screen at the moment is 5 milliseconds, so if you count the blocks, we are looking at about 10 milliseconds high and 2 milliseconds low. That's perfect. Finally, let's take a look at the data input output pins. There are two distinct spikes here. The higher one is 5 volts, that corresponds to the Arduino writing data to the chip, and the lower one is the chip outputting data to the Arduino. The chip's datasheet told us that that would be a minimum of 2.2 volts, and it seems to be just over 3 here. So, what does our serial monitor look like for a good test? Here's a snapshot of testing this chip. We can see that the serial monitor tells us the test starts running, and we're starting with address 0, cycling through all 16 possible data words. Then the whole thing starts again for address 1. In fact, if you watch the serial monitor without freezing it, it gets through the addresses pretty quickly. That's all well and good, but we won't know if the test is working correctly until we give it a bad chip. And what happens when it does see a bad chip? This is what we see in the serial monitor. In this case, we've tried to write 0100 to address 1. But bit 0 of the data word that we read back came back as high, so we know something's wrong with this chip. Don't try and read too much into this failure though. Take a look at the serial monitor while I was running the test. We can see that this chip was totally fried. Out of interest, let's put the scope on one of the data pins. We should expect to see those two nice spikes of 5 volts and 3 volts, and in fact we just get noise. So yeah, this chip is definitely dead. And the results are in. There were only two dead chips. That's not bad, I should be able to find two fairly easily and get this thing up and running. Thanks for watching. Join me next time where we'll be using an Arduino again to read the contents of these ROM chips.